information on what extreme heat is and the impact of climate and what the impact of climate change will mean for Hamilton. The city of Hamilton declares a heat event when there are two or more consecutive days with daytime highs at or above 31 degrees centigrade and nighttime lows of at or above 20 degrees centigrade or a humid X of 40 degrees or greater. As the impacts of climate change worsen, Hamilton can expect to see an increase in the number of days over 30 degrees, an increase in the number and length of heat waves, and an increase in the length of the hot season. Extreme heat can have severe consequences for people, especially vulnerable, vulnerable and marginalized populations. It can also be lethal. Some of the effects on the body include muscle spasms, fatigue, heat stroke, and decreased cognitive ability. Although extreme heat can be deadly, and certainly is every year, we have no way of knowing just how deadly it is as heat-related deaths are not recorded or tracked in either Ontario or Hamilton. We launched our survey in July to hear from tenants across the city about the issues of extreme heat. The survey was shared and filled out by ACORN members and tenants through community meetings, outreach, phone banking, and social media. We collected 120 individual surveys from 79 different addresses. 66% of respondents reported a household income of under $60,000 a year. Key takeaways from the survey. Number one, extreme heat impacts many Hamilton tenants. 70% of survey responders reported being impacted by extreme heat in their home. The top five ways that heat impacted tenants was poor sleep, fatigue, headaches, and an in inability to concentrate or complete tasks. 22 individual respondents reported suffering from heat stroke in their own apartment. Number two, a significant amount of respondents reported no access to air conditioning in their unit. 30% of respondents shared that they do not have access to air conditioning in their apartment. The biggest barriers to access to air conditioning were number one, financial cost, either the purchase price of an air conditioner or the hydro cost to operate one. Number two, restrictions by landlords. Other issues that tenants shared with us include that their lease or rental agreement prohibited the use of air conditioners. They were threatened with eviction if they did not take their window air conditioner out. They were unable to safely install a window air conditioner or their landlord charges extra fees to use an air conditioner. For tenants without air conditioning, using fans was the most popular way to cope. 18 responders without air conditioning shared that they go to indoor community or public spaces to keep cool during the day. Of the tenants that do have air conditioning, 51% said they have window units, 32% said they have portable units, and 17% said they have central air. Number three, tenants are extremely concerned about the impacts of climate change in their communities. 82% of tenants said that they were very concerned about climate change in relation to rising temperatures. Number four, tenants are unsure of their rights as it relates to their ability to keep cool at home. 67% of respondents said that they do not know their rights as a tenant on this issue. Number five, tenants agree that action needs to be taken to protect them from extreme heat. 98% of respond respondents agreed that tenants should have the right to be comfortable and safe in their apartment. So ACORN survey results demonstrate the impact of extreme heat on tenants and the urgent need for policy to ensure rental housing does not exceed unsafe temperatures. The following are ACORN's demands for the city of Hamilton. The City of Hamilton needs to develop and implement a maximum heat bylaw for rental housing. The bylaw needs to apply to all rental housing, all densities, market, and social housing. 26 degrees Celsius has been recognized by other jurisdictions as a suitable maximum indoor temperature, but development of the bylaw should include consultation with tenants, housing organizations, and health professionals to determine the maximum temperature. Support for Hamilton's license, sorry, support from Hamilton's licensing department to ensure landlord compliance. And similar to Hamilton's minimum heat bylaw, there should be a financial penalty for landlords who fail to comply. 
Some Ontario cities like Mississauga and Ajax do require landlords to keep indoor temperatures not above 26 degrees centigrade, but only if air conditioning is provided by the landlord. Currently, there are no Canadian examples of a maximum heat bylaw requiring landlords to provide cooling for rental housing, but several jurisdictions in the United States have passed local legislation. Second demand. The city of Hamilton needs to develop a municipal program to support retrofits of market rental housing. Similar to the development of home retrofit program for homeowners, Hamilton needs a program for landlords to reduce energy consumption and retrofit older market affordable housing stock to adapt to a hotter climate. Demand number three, the city of Hamilton needs to expand measures in community and public spaces for Hamilton residents to keep cool when outside the home. Things like more drinking fountains or the expansion of and improvements to Hamilton's tree canopy, especially in low and moderate income tenant communities. Demand number four, the city of Hamilton needs to record heat related deaths. To better understand the extent of the problem and to demonstrate the urgent need for local action on extreme heat, we need better information. ACORN will be submitting a request to the coroner that they begin recording and heat-related deaths. ACORN expects the City of Hamilton to make a similar supporting request of the coroner and to petition the provincial government to enact the same across Ontario. I will now pass it back to Marnie.